All right, so now we're going to talk about systems of linear equations. So just start off with just defining some linear equations by themselves. Uh, a linear equation in R2 has the general form of, say, ax plus by is equal to c. Um, a linear equation in R3 would have the general form of ax, say it down here, ax plus by uh, plus, let's say, cz, the z component, is equal to d. Now, um, we can define this in any dimension for linear equations. So for rn, it's just any, whatever we pick for n, uh, we can define as, let's, uh, let's all use the same term, or we would say a1, let's call it x1, uh, plus a2, <clears throat> x2, plus, and we would continue this on. Uh, the reason I use x1 and x2 is because if, say, we have more than 26 dimensions, it's just going to get really messy. So we'll just use x with the subscript numbers. And then we would have uh, plus a n x n is equal to some other number, let's just say b. Now it's important to notice that here, anytime we use uh, in this form, uh, we use an x or a y, uh, or a z, I guess, for that matter. These are the variables. We'll just circle these or underline them. These here are all the variables, and same with x1, x2, and xn. And anything else, if it's an a or a b or a c, I guess, or a d, the rest of these, we'll underline them in green, these are all constants like that. We'll just quickly shoot that underneath all of those. Um, so we have a combination of variables and constants to get us linear equations. Now it's really important in a, in a linear equation that uh, there's no products or reciprocals or other functions that are happening with the variables. Like for example if we had ax squared plus by is equal to c. This is not a linear function because now we're going to get some sort of parabola that's looking like this or maybe that way. So all of the all of the variables have to be to the first power. So you know you could essentially just write little ones for all of them, but we don't really need to do that. It's just implied. Uh, but if you ever see a square root of a variable or a, a variable that's raised to a certain power, right away you know that's not a linear equation. So let's just go through some really simple systems of linear equations to get you familiar. So we said that up here, these are each individual linear equations. Uh, so I'll draw a system of linear equations, something that looks like this. Uh, x plus y plus z is equal to 3. And we'll say, so this is one linear equation. Now we're going to write another linear equation, which is say y minus z is equal to 0. And we'll say that our last linear equation, z is equal to 1. And together, these three linear equations all form a system of linear equations. And I guess what the definition, like the textbook definition of a system of linear equations is just a finite set of linear equations. Here we have three um, that each have the same variables. And so if we want to solve a system of linear equations, basically what the solution is, is just a vector that solves all of these equations in the system at the same time. Right, so in this case, it's, uh, if we would find the solution to this system of linear equations would be a three-dimensional vector that has the x component, y component, and z component, such that uh, we could solve any of these equations using the same vector. And what the heck does that mean? Well. It's really, it might seem a little bit confusing, but let's, uh, let's solve this system of linear equations using a method called back substitution. So we already know, according to this system, that z is equal to 1. So if we just substitute a z back into this next equation up top, we would have, uh, let's write it here, we, so we have z is equal to 1. And now if we go down here, the next equation, because we know z is equal to 1, we have y minus, and we can substitute in the 1 for z, is equal to 0. And then we can move this over, and y, 
will be equal to 1. So we can write that up here to you, y is equal to 1. And now we have y and z, so we want to substitute these into the next equation. So we'll have, let's write it here, we'll have x plus 1, you can probably see where this is going, uh, plus z was equal to 1, is equal to 3. And when we solve for x, we'll get x is equal to 3 minus 2, x is equal to 1. And just write that up here to keep it cleaner. x is equal to 1. And now if we just want to double check, make sure we did this correctly. Uh, if we had x and y and z are all equal to 1, 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 3, 1 minus 1 is 0, and 1 is equal to 1. So we did do this correctly. So the solutions are z is equal to 1, y is equal to 1, and x is equal to 1. Or we could write that in vector form here as the vector 1, 1, 1. And that's what I was talking about before. This vector can be used as the solution for any of these individual linear equations. Now at this point, you look down here and you see, well, z is equal to 1, but like I don't see where y is equal to 1 and x is equal to 1. So let's just work through this here. Um, we're dealing with a vector in R3, or a system of linear equations in R3. Um, and so we have each linear equation has this form, ax plus by plus cz is equal to d. So we'll write this out in full for this system, and you'll see exactly what's going on here. So for the first row, we had ax plus by. So we had uh, the a, b, and c are just the coefficients that come before the variables. And here they're each one, right? If it was like 2x plus 3y plus 4z, uh, a would be 2, b would be 3, and c would be 4. But no, they're all 1s. So this was 1, I'll just use the same colors up here as before, uh, 1 and 1. And we had x, y, and z. So 1x, uh, 1y, and 1z. And this was all equal to d, which was 3. Right. Throw in our plus symbols there. And let's do the next one down here. I'll fill in the x's and y's first, or the y's and z's, just to keep it a little smoother. So we had y, z, and down here we had a z. Okay. And so let's fill in some more values. Uh, we had equals equals and this row was equal to 0 and this row is equal to 1. Alright, so the coefficients on the second one, we have y is equal to 1, uh, or 1 times y, sorry, uh, and we had 1 times z, and down here we had 1 times z. Alright, so now also here we had the minus and that's all the information that we can see from here. But what's really going on is we also have an x here, an x here, an x, and a y here, but their coefficients uh, are just zeros. That's why you're not seeing them. Zero and a zero here. And so then same thing, this would, we could just throw in plus signs to make it all look the same. And there you go. So that's why, for example, for the last for the last equation here, if we substitute x is equal to 1, and y is equal to 1, and z is equal to 1, we'd have 0 times 1 plus 0 times 1 plus 1 times 1 is equal to 1. 